Hi, everybody. Afternoon Path Chat covering futures for March 22nd. This is Bob Iacchino, along with Mike Arnold from Path Trading Partners. Mike is going to take a look at Dow Jones, Dow Jones Transports, the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and crude oil in this futures update. Quickly, I want to go over a few of the details from the EIA report in crude oil that came out this morning. We had a 5 million barrel build from the previous week in commercial crude oil inventories. We are now at 533.1 million barrels of inventory. That's the upper limit of the average range for this time of the year. It is right around the highest ever on record. Motor gasoline inventories decreased by 2.8 million barrels last week. We're near the upper half of the average range, according to the petroleum supply report from the EIA. Also, we had a production increase out of the U.S. of 0.2%. Now, crude oil rallied a little bit. It might be because the production increase from the U.S. was not as large as expected. It could be because it takes 2.2 barrels of oil to make one barrel of gasoline, and we now have two weeks in a row of large gasoline draws. But when you look at the level of total stockpiles that are listed in this report, for gasoline, motor gasoline right now, 243.5 million barrels. Last year, this time, 245.1 million barrels. So we do have lower stockpiles in gasoline than last year, only by about a little bit under 2 million barrels. But crude oil stockpiles are 31.5 million barrels higher in stockpiles. There is not likely to be enough of a summer driving season to pull that crude oil down to the lower end of average levels in terms of the stockpiles we have. We also had a terrorist attack in the UK that I'm only mentioning, honestly, for point of completeness. It's always terrible when lives are lost. This attack took place around the UK parliament, but our job is to make calls on markets. This particular event didn't move the markets at all. Let me turn it over to Mike to show you what he is seeing on the futures charts. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Bob. Dow Jones Industrial Average up here pulled back pretty much to our minimum level of our pullback zone and reversed up today. Doesn't mean the pullback's necessarily over. This would be the minimum key level that we were keying off. If we continue our pullback tomorrow and violate today's low, watch for us potentially to pull back around 2465 and the next level lower is 2421. If we rally above today's high, the resistance is coming in at 2755 to 2785. Also, we have a turning over 21 and a turning over 8 coming into that same vicinity. So that is going to be very, very key. If we were to get through that, the next major area higher is right around 2866. Over to the transports. Again, we bounced off the trend line that's been in place for quite some time. Let me adjust this a bit. You can see how we rallied off the transports straight up to a key gain level 89.96. If we continue higher tomorrow, next levels up are 9,025, which is a minor significant level. And then our next level higher is 9,088. If we turn back down and go through today's low, we'd be violating the trend line. And the next level down, which is a prior breakout level and a key gain level is 88.11. Over to the S&P, you can see we hit the the yellow orange pullback zone, minimum pullback zone in there. If we continue and rally through today's high, then my the next key levels are 2353, followed by 2357. And on a strong rally, we'd be looking at all the way going up to 2363. If we pull back and close or move through today's low. Next support comes into the 50, about 2328, and then we don't have a lot of support down to a GAN level at 2315, which is the bottom of the possible pullback zone. And the NASDAQ, which you can see has not even got close to the pullback zone at all with today, and it's right now trading after hours. 
right about today's high. If we continue to rally tomorrow, 5,405 is going to be key, and then 5,417. Those are the key ones. If we go pull back, watch for a retest of today's low, 53.13, followed by 52.99. And if we had a big sell-off, next level of support is 52.53. We switch over to crude. Crude oil was trading below the trend line, went down to our key defining point, 47.09, which we've talked about and rallied sharply up getting us above the trend line again. So this is a very key area between the trend line and that defining point. If we sell off, watch for potential support 47.92, 47.62, then around the 47.09 level again. If we rally resistance 48.39, then we have 48.76, GAN level, trend line, and declining eight. And then above that, we'd be looking at 49.30, then 49.47. Keeping it really simple tonight, just wanted to point out some things on the charts and some key levels to update because we may have more move, movement tomorrow. I'm going to turn it back to you, Bob. Thank you, Michael. Keep in mind, tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., Janet Yellen is speaking. That's 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. We are going to try and get an a.m. FX path chat up before her speech starts, but we may be cutting it really close. Also, the health care vote in the House for the American Health Care Act, which is Donald Trump's first real fight. He had a bunch of easy wins with the executive orders and things like that and keeping campaign promises. Regardless of what you think of the policies, they were easy wins for him. Now he's got his first real fight, and it isn't lining up very well for him. So... That could cause some volatility in every market, FX, stocks, futures, all of the above. Cheers, everyone. If you like what we're doing, hit the like and subscribe button, and we will see you in the next video.